By the time I was 30 years old, I had done everything I'd set out to do. I had taken my band from playing in basements to playing stadiums and arenas. Married, had a kid, had a house, everything you really could ever want. But when it came down to it, that didn't make the dysphoria go away. My earliest memories are of gender dysphoria. I felt lost, alone, confused, and at times like I couldn't survive. It took until I was 31 to publicly come out as a transgender woman. Nothing has been the same since. The coming out was terrifying, of course. I grew up in a really strict household. Their answer was to take me to a therapist and put me in a hospital and try and lock me away. I thought I had no one to talk to. I had no resources to like, go to. I would say I was just pushing it away. I didn't want to accept who I was. I just felt like a guy. I always felt that way. I'm out here searching, and I'm looking for something. And meeting other people, hearing what gender means to them, is what I need right now. I started asking myself, well, would I be happier if I were a woman? And I realized that I wasn't wrong. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm a trans person. I'm not going to pretend to be someone I'm not any longer. You can classify someone as trans, or genderqueer, or whatever you want. But when it comes down to it, they're just people. Hey everyone, thanks for coming. Uh, I have to say, you are one of my heroes, so this is exciting for me as well. Thank uh, you. And I think we'll just get straight into it. Sounds good. Hey, everyone. <laughs> so in the beginning of True Trans, you, you say hearing their stories, meaning other trans people's stories, and then being able to relate myself to them is what I needed right now. So I'm wondering, is it fair to say that you got as much out of this series as you were giving? And did you realize that this was going to happen when you decided to do the series? I got more out of it you know, than I could have ever imagined. Um, and that being said, I didn't really go into it with any thought of what it was going to be like. I mean, I was more intimidated than anything else and kind of scared because, you know, you're putting your story into the hands of a camera crew, you know, and other people who are going to eventually be editing it. And uh, you're just kind of giving a lot of blind trust. But I really lucked out with the people who worked on the show just being really top notch people all around. Tell me about the decision, though, to do the show in the first place, then. Like, how did that happen? Why did you agree to it? Did you kind of think, ah, maybe I don't want to do this? Well, it was really open-ended as to what it was going to be. You know, it was like, we're AOL. This is what we've done with other shows. We'd like you to do something. But as to what that is, we'll figure it out. So uh, it was really, you know, simple where I had, since coming out, kind of built a network of people through through Twitter, through Instagram, through Facebook that I had been in contact with and just wanted the chance to meet in person and saw that as an opportunity to kind of use that for it, to actually meet up and to have a conversation for, for a reason other than just for um, you know one-on-one -on -one and no one else hearing anything from it. I think a lot of people, when we talk about being transgender, their first question is, well, when did you know? Did something happen to you? Uh, you know, why, why did you decide to come out when you, when you did? When did you first realize that you were transgender or that, or that you weren't what maybe people thought you were supposed to be? Right. Well, I think that the, the realization of the term is what comes later. Like, because I probably didn't hear the term transgender till I was like 17 or 18 or something like that. So it was already figuring out, you know, before that, knowing you cer felt a certain way, but just not knowing how to identify those feelings or not knowing what that meant. And when you don't know what something means or how to like verbalize it, it makes it that much harder to even go to someone to talk about it, even if you ha have someone to talk about it, assuming that that's there. Um, so it really just took a long time to understand like that, yeah, I, I guess I fit under that umbrella and, and that's me. I think the interesting thing that happens after that though too is that in trying to figure out how to be trans, mm -hmm. there isn't one way to be trans. And I love there's part, one of the videos you talk about watching uh, a woman on YouTube who had been documenting her transition and you said that you watched that video over and over and over. And obviously that spoke to you because you were sort of 
new to this. Right. How does someone learn how to be trans? What does that even mean? Do you have to learn how to be trans? <laughs> I mean, I think it's really learning how to be yourself. And that was, but that was like a really intimidating thing going into it, especially doing this in the public eye was that like, you know, on the one hand, I felt like I had to come out first before I really embraced transition just because I felt like there'd be a much more negative backlash if I was like starting to exhibit signs of transition but not giving any explanation for that. Um, but then after that, it was like, okay, now I've said this thing to the world and I feel like now there's an expectation for me to fit into another box that isn't necessarily who I'm saying I am either. I'm saying I don't even know who I am. I need to figure that out, you know? So it was really just kind of like learning as I went and then really like the opportunity to do true trans and to speak to everyone that I spoke to was just like such an invaluable thing where realizing that, you know, I thought that, okay, I've been in transition for a year, so I should have like passed certain milestones or like had certain accomplishments, like trans accomplishments or something, which just isn't the case. You know, there were people who had been transitioning for, you know, like two decades or more who I met who were still just as much trying to figure it out and still just like works in progress. And you realize that that's just how it is. That's life and you're figuring it out as you go. Where would you say you, you are now on your journey? I mean, do you feel like you're at a place now where you are comfortable being a role model? This is something that feels right to you. And did you wanna be a role model? I think sometimes when you're famous, and like you said, you're transitioning all of a sudden in the public eye, it's just sort of thrust upon you that you're also not just gonna be a rock star, mm -hmm. you're also now gonna be an advocate too. And I don't think everyone wants to be that. I was more looking at it as like, I wanna, I wanna talk about things that are real and like talk about honest things that matter because I do have a platform. Because I have been in a band since I was like 17 and like we've done X amount of records where every time you do a record, you do press and there's always a story that the press focuses on and usually it's something that doesn't matter and doesn't have any kind of real world impact like what is and isn't punk rock. Um, but this is something that's real. And so if you're doing press and if you're, you're talking about stuff and being public and being visible and that can help push push something forward in the social consciousness, then I see that as a really great opportunity that should be taken advantage of. Um, and then especially presenting yourself in a punk rock way of saying like, I'm, I'm like on a stage now, but, but there is no stage or there is no pedestal, there's no real barrier between us and that like I'm a real person and you know, like I would like to be a part of your community and you know, like I need a community to be a part of, you know, and, and, and just like spreading that message too of accessibility and, and uh, of realness. It's interesting, I've interviewed a lot of queer artists, you know, who either are gay or transgender, and I like to ask them, I say, you know, do you think that your queerness affects or impacts your art? And some of them say, not at all. Like, I would be making art if I was queer or not queer. Other people say, 100%, I wouldn't be an artist if I, if I wasn't queer. Where, we, where do you fall on that spectrum? Um, I think that I would still 100% be an artist. I think just that the like journey that I've taken as an artist would have been a lot more enjoyable had I been more like able to accept myself at a younger age because I spent a lot of years feeling really isolated from my band, feeling really isolated in the rock and roll community, if you want to put it like that, and like unsure of myself while still being presented with amazing opportunities. I just wasn't able to fully enjoy them. And it's definitely been something that's like influenced songwriting or influenced my art, but I'm thankful for that in that way and having given me an experience that's detached from like the normal mainstream experience. You know, like I'm, I'm thankful for the things that have set me apart from other people. Speaking of your band, there's a great episode about coming out. You talk about coming out to your band and how they took it. Were you surprised at, at how they took your coming out? And, and it seems in a lot of ways like your coming out was actually a really good thing and you didn't have a lot of pushback. But from the parts that we're not seeing, was there pushback? Were you getting threats or were you getting hate mail or, or what, what happened? Within my band, I mean, it was really, it was really easy. Um, and I think it helped to explain a lot about me to them where there might have been instances in the past where I'd get upset over little things where they couldn't understand why I'd possibly be upset about that. And then once I came out to them, they were like, oh, okay, that makes sense, you know? Um, and it really served to strengthen a lot of relationships, especially me and James, who's my guitar player and, and my best friend. You know, I've been friends with him for 20 years and our friendship's better than it had, has been, you know, in over a decade. Um, but any of the pushback or any of the criticism or any of the, like, anything like that was usually, like, reserved to uh, random passerbys on the street or people who didn't know me or, um, you know, trolls online. <clears throat> um, this, the series, I think, 
is really intimate in a lot of ways, and it goes to places that maybe people don't think. Like, we see you injecting hormones. Um, you're pretty open. Were there ever parts where you were like, ah, I don't want to talk about that, I don't want to show that? Um, do you regret showing anything that you showed? I don't regret anything. I, I, I mean, I think that, like, with anything I shared, I was really sure personally on the reasons why I was sharing it. And a lot of the times, you know, when it comes to trans representation in the media and everything, like, there's obviously been a real fascination and focus put on, like, the actual medical transition part of it. But at the same time, knowing as a trans person that when I was curious about HRT, um, and there being no resources out there and not knowing what the reality of being on hormones was like or, or anything like that, you know, those were resources that I wanted. So like to demonstrate that this is the, this is what it means, you know, this is what it means if you're going to transition medically and you're going to, you're going to take hormones that you're going to have to give yourself a shot with a big needle in the leg, and, you know, once a week, that's a reality. And I don't think something that should be hidden, but at the same time, not something that should be exploited either. Because we've seen that a lot in the media. I mean, I can think of like, you know, the Katie Couric show or like Piers Morgan, people who really get being transgender wrong. Um, but at the same time, we're seeing a lot more visibility, I think. People right. like you, people like Laverne Cox, obviously Caitlyn Jenner. What do you think we still need to know about being trans that's not being broadcast? Um, I think it's more what needs to be known about being an ally to the trans community and just letting trans people speak for themselves and represent themselves as opposed to trying to speak for them and trying to tell them what their needs are and trying to fulfill those needs based on what you think their needs are. Um, just you know, creating a safe space where everyone can have an equal voice and, and, and represent where they're coming from is, is really important. Um, speaking of Caitlyn Jenner, what, what did you think about her journey and did, could you relate to it or was it just sort of outside of your realm of understanding um you know i i kind of purposely removed myself from it a little bit where like i i was traveling overseas at the time like the vanity fair article came out and uh at the time like with the show premiered or whatever and so like I knew everyone online was talking about it, and I, because I hadn't seen it initially, I was just like, you know what, I'm not gonna look at it, and I'm not gonna like seek it out, and I'm just gonna know that this person has an ex some kind of experience that's similar to mine, you know, although very different, and you know, I send them my support 100%, and I don't need to know the ins and outs and details of your life to know that it's been difficult, or to know, I don't know, that I support that or whatever. And I think it's good that it's it's out there and that she's visible, you know? Um, at the same time, obviously, you know, her experience doesn't speak for the trans community as a whole, and it's different. The one thing I do think is really important, though, about Caitlyn Jenner, though, is that, like, she comes from a generation that means a lot to an older generation where they have that memory of, you know, the Wheaties box era. Um, so you have that that relates to like my parents in a different way than it relates to the younger generation because they see that person as someone from their past and oh look, this is, this is someone who was a part of the fabric of society back then that is trans. Definitely. When you, when you did come out um, as trans in the public eye, was there ever a time when you just thought, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to come out, and then I'm just going to live my life and tour and make music, and that's going to be my life? I didn't really think it was an option. Really? I just knew that it was like, okay, by doing this and still wanting to play music and still perform, that I'm going to have to be fairly public about this, even if that, does, even if that means I don't have it figured out totally as I go, you know? Um, I think that as a trans person, you end up getting a lot of uh, either stupid questions or offensive questions or really stupid and really offensive questions. <laughs> <laughs> have you gotten, you know, have you gotten those? And really stupid and yeah, offensive yeah. questions? And, yeah, and does, sure. it bother, does it bother you? And how do you usually react to situations like it's, that? It's tough because like, you know, I'm a punk. So like my knee jerk reaction when somebody says something stupid and offensive is to just be like, you know what, screw you. Um, but then like anytime I've taken that attitude, I've walked away from the situation thinking like, damn it, you know, I missed the chance to reach one person. Even if the rest of the interview would have been horrible and like no one would have watched it or listened to it or whatever. But that one person I could have corrected and been like, look, that wasn't cool for this reason. You should have maybe put it like this. I'm not perfect. I don't always have the presence of mind to be able to do that. But that, like, I feel like I wish and I hope I can do every time. Yeah, and I think, you know, I always think about being gay, too. I get dumb questions, but I feel like the burden is sort of on me, even if I don't want it to be, because it's like, 
we live a life that other people don't understand or don't know about. If we can help change their minds, we should do it. Right. What are questions you wish people would ask? What do I wish people would ask? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I really try to take the attitude that there's no stupid question, you know, like just that some questions are phrased better than others. And if someone has a question, then fine, ask the question. I'll try to answer it. Is there anything in True Trans that you guys didn't get to that you wish you could have shown? No, there was just a lot of people that I wish I could have talked to that I didn't get the chance to include for whatever reason, like schedule conflicts or location conflicts, yeah. Do you find more people now are fans of the band after you, you came out? Or maybe not more, but a, a whole new subset? Um, you know, it's mixed. Like, we've always been the type of band because punk rock is eternally youthful where there's always, like, new people coming into it anyways. And then there's a lot of people who I've met who will say, like, I listened to you back in the day when you all were first starting out. Then I kind of fell out of touch with the music. And then I transitioned. Then I saw you were transitioning and I got pulled back into the music, which is really cool to hear. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's mixed. I mean, we've always been the type of band that's had kind of steady growth, you know. Do you have any role models or people who have helped you through this? Was there someone sort of like a torchbearer that you looked to when, when you were going through the middle of all this? I mean, really, all the people I interviewed for the shows were the people that like I looked up to. Like That's why I wanted to talk to them, because they were the people who, like when I started Transition, I was like in an isolated city in Florida. I had no real community, so like I started living really online and having friends online, and then like slowly you know, started meeting them in person or whatever, like through the show, got to meet them and have maintained friendships from that. But, you know, to me, I just really find it inspirational on a, on a basic level when I meet someone out doing whatever it is they're doing, you know, being who they are and not, not backing down from that. Do you have any political aspirations? Or, I mean, do you find, you know, they're, they're, because I'm there's such- I'm not running for president. No, yeah. <laughs> I'd vote for you. Um, but I think that there's such a political side to being trans as well, especially when you look at things even like bathroom bills, where they're trying to keep trans right. people out of bathrooms or locker rooms, things like that. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you feel like you need to be a part of that conversation too? I would like to. I feel like that's what really needs to be, where there needs to be a lot of work. That All the talk is great and visibility is really great too, but having legally assured rights is really important to trans people, whether that's like, you know, with, with jobs, with housing, with healthcare, wh whatever, you know? Um, something I've been thinking a lot about lately is trans kids. I think that that's sort of like the next frontier in a lot of ways. And we're seeing more and more kids being able to come out. Like you were saying, when you were a kid, there just wasn't even the language for it. Right. So you couldn't come out as trans then. Um, but other people say, you know, is it too soon to let kids come out when they're five or six as trans? Where do you stand on that situation? I think it's just framing the question wrong. I think it, oftentimes it's too soon to be enforcing gender roles on, on young kids, you know, and that immediately when you go into the school system, like you're divided up into boy and girl and like, you know, told that this is what you should do if you're a boy and this is what you should do if you're a girl. And that that's the problem is that you put people in boxes too early. Yeah, I totally agree. Through, through everything you've been through so far, which has, it hasn't been that long actually, do you have any regrets? Uh, you know, I've really tried to make sure that I made the most out of it. Um, yeah. What would you say the hardest part has been so far then? Uh, accepting change. Accepting change is really hard because change often means that, uh, that there's an unknown of you, you know, you don't know what's gonna happen next and you kind of have to have faith that it's all gonna work out for the best as long as you're, you're trying your hardest and, and you have a positive attitude. What would you say you're the proudest of? Um, I just still being alive, <laughs> you know, like still being here and kicking. I, I'm, I'm pretty proud of that, yeah. <laughs> Um, will you talk to me a little bit about your family mm -hmm. and how your family dealt with this? Because I think that's the thing too. I think a lot of people, even people who are trans allies, and, and they say, oh yeah, I support everyone being able to do whatever they want. But when, when it happens in the family, I think that could be a different situation. What was it like coming out to your family? It was terrifying. I mean, that was probably the most difficult part of it all. Um, <clears throat> But, you know, I've been lucky in that some of my family has been extremely supportive. But you realize, too, in those situations that it's like, 
you know, you've had to undergo your mental change and accept whatever, but that they have to accept it and they have to go through whatever mental process they need to go through and that that's different for everybody. So all you can really do is like, you know, say what you have to say, put yourself out there, and then they need to take that and process it in their own time. A lot of therapy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interviews are like therapy sometimes. <laughs> right? You just talk about yourself for 20 yeah. minutes. Um, also, like, I don't know. We have a clock somewhere that tells me how much time we have left, but... Oh, a minute and 55 seconds. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Who's keeping track? Right? Yeah. Not me. Um, what's up next for you? What are you looking forward to and, and what's happening in your world? Uh, I've been really busy. I mean, we've been touring all this year and we have like another month of touring and then we're going right into the studio. We had a live record come out a couple days ago that was actually recorded while we were while we were recording for the AOL series. Um, and then uh, get to work on a new studio record, as I said, and then I'm um, working on a book and just staying busy. What's the, what's the book? Uh, I've kept tour journals since I was like, started touring. So I had millions and millions of words <laughs> from writing in journals and kind of like do a book like Get in the Van, like Henry Rollins, but a little more transsexual. I love that. <laughs> I think that should, that should be how you sell it. <laughs> Henry Rollins, but a little more transsexual. Less He's muscles. A, yeah, less <laughs> muscles. Okay, got it. Um, okay, I think we're going to turn it over to these fine folks out here. Okay. I'm sure have questions. Hey, how's it going? So I love the live album. Thank you. You're welcome. My question is, without giving away too much, what can we expect when y'all go back into the studio? Like, can we expect a little surprise, or is it going to be an album more for the fans, or has it even come to that yet, like, you know, discussing about it? I really want to make a collaborative record. I want to, like, as a band, feel like we all really contributed, and, like, beyond that, have friends come in and play on the record, too, just because, like, the most of the record has been written while on tour, um, that it has, like, a real friendship vibe, if that makes sense. Where are we going? Oh, cool. Hey, how, how are you? I'm good. How are you? A couple of weeks ago, um, Keith Buckley is a, is a peer of mine. Uh -huh. And we were having a conversation how people don't change. They manifest. So could you possibly speak more on that, your thoughts on what may stimulate that, that manifesting? Or uh, I'm sure there's a myriad of different catalysts that may do that. Right. But, um, but yeah. Perhaps, well, I guess know, like manifestation change. usually r leads to change, you know, like going back to talking about keeping journals and stuff. Like I have years and years of journals where I'm talking about all the things that I don't like about myself and how much I want to change them and how much I wish certain things were different. And you spend enough time focusing on those things and, and wishing and hoping. And then suddenly, like you just push yourself forward or it, it manifests. You, you're focusing on something and that and then that that becomes a reality. If that answers your question, yeah. <laughs> uh, how you doing? Good. <laughs> uh, congratulations on your Emmy nomination for Thank Trans. Thank you. Um, I wanted to know, when you began the show, what's the response you were hoping to get from the audiences? And did you get that response? Or did you get something that contradicted what you were hoping of? Um, I guess the response that I got was what I was hoping for and that it would make a connection with people and that it would educate people and that it would also be a good thing for people who are going through the experience of transition to, to point someone to, to be like, if you don't really understand what I'm going through, watch this and maybe it can answer some of your questions. So just like making something that makes the whole experience more relatable and especially demonstrating like, you know, experiences different from mine and trying to have like that as many as many different stories as I could included in that. Hey Laura, how are you doing? Good. Just wanted to say I'm a huge fan, so thank you for all the records and all the great nights, everything. Right huge on. fan. Thank um you. anyway, uh your first rec my opinion, the first uh kind of clue to your transgender coming out, whatever, was the song The Ocean off a new wave. Um Obviously, looking back on it, everything was there. It's completely obvious. I guess the question I'm asking is, was there anything before that song that you could try to kind of say, this is what I'm going through, kind of? Yeah, I, you know, like, pretty much on every Against Me record, there's always been songs that are me just dealing with gender dysphoria. Um, 
you know, and a lot of the times that was like really heavily masked and not as open as it was, say, on a song like The Ocean. That was kind of like, after, at first it'd be like stuff where like you subconsciously realize you're writing something and you don't want to be exposing yourself. And then it became kind of almost a like, well, how much can I say before anyone catches on that this is what I'm talking about? And I can't believe no one's paying attention to what I'm saying here and missing the point. Um, so it kind of became like that eventually, for sure. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, so I got a question for you in regards of um, do you see moving forward with this and making it a part of your life, uh, maybe even part of your legacy, uh, educating and maybe fighting uh, for additional laws and what's your ultimate end goal with this? What do you see? What's your ideal end goal with this? How do you see the ideal future for transgender people? As much as I can be of aid in pushing the trans in pushing trans rights forward, I want to be able to to help with that, you know. And I do have a platform, and I, I can use my band for that and and be visible. That being said, like the hope or the end goal is that it'll just eventually be a non-issue, and no one will really care. Hi. Hello. Okay, so I have a genuine question. My stepdad actually came out a couple months ago, which is actually kind of crazy that I'm here, because um, I'm just wondering, like, you said you had a daughter, right? I do, yeah. Like, where does that, like, tie in with your, you know, wife and daughter? It's tough. Like, I mean, with my daughter especially, you know, like, on the one hand, kids are kind of easy in that, like, as long as they know you love them, that's essentially, like, what's most important, you know? Um, but I imagine as she gets older, like dealing with school situations and stuff like that, that there'll be growing pains and there'll be things that I have to navigate that might not be that fun. But it was already kind of weird enough when I was just a weird rocker parent with tattoos, you know? <laughs> um, but, you know, that, that's tricky. But I think that it's becoming more and more common, you know, like for kids in school to have like, you know, two dads, two moms or, or whatever, like type of parenting situation, whatever kind of household. So. That's just the way it is, and I have to work with it. Yeah. Last question. Hi. Hey. Um, I'm a student at Pace University, and uh, I'm taking a transgender, trans, transgender studies class this semester. Um, my professor told me we were the first school in the city to have this class for the, the regular curriculum. And I was wondering if there's any um, specific topics that you would recommend that we discuss in the class. Specific topics. I, I, I mean, what are you already discussing in the cat cl class, or has it just started? Uh, we just had the first introduction, okay. so <laughs> <laughs> not much yet. We're gonna talk about like Genesis a little bit, and uh, but mostly um, trans allies and. Um, yeah, I think just the history of of trans people is is pretty interesting and and good to make sure that you get into and, you know. Uh, the people who did it long time ago when there was even less resources. Cool. I think that is it. I want to say thank you for coming. Thank you all guys for coming. Thank you all.